Hey guys and gals, welcome back to Gear Guitars with Mel. As usual, I am Mel, and today we're going to be checking out something you've seen before, but with a little a couple few differences maybe. This is my uh, PRS SE Custom 24. So it's made in the Cork factory over there uh, in, was it Indonesia? And it's a great guitar. Maple top, mahogany body, mahogany neck, you know, rosewood fingerboard, really, really good guitar. Um, I love the way it feels. I actually love the way every guitar that comes out of the, the Cork factory feels. <laughs> it's really good. Um, I have that thing with world music too, the Korean, yeah, it's just good stuff. But the guitar feels great, you know, and there was nothing wrong with it. It wasn't a matter of something being wrong. It was just a matter of, I knew that for as good as it felt to play, it should sound a little more specific to what I want. Because playing it is it was a dream. But when I plugged it in, it was like, it was good. Of course it's good. You know, it's PRS. It's it's a good guitar, but it just wasn't how I roll. Those 85-15 pickups are not, you know, they're good all-around pickups. But I, I'm a vintage pickup kind of dude. That's, that's what I dig. I dig a fairly low output um, that I can then run through whatever number of transparent drives <laughs> and get the tone that I want. So, uh, we move. contacted Dave over at Zhang Bucker and he wound me some uh, pure hand mount pickups. So what we got here in the bridge is called the Slug Bucker. This is uh, Alnico 2, uh, reads out at about 8.3k ohm, uh, nice vintage you know, good sound and pickup, you know, it's got some really nice beef to it. And up here we have what is called the T-Bucker. T-Bucker is, uh, I believe, an Alnico 3 that's at 7.8k. So you're talking very vintage output, which... You know me, my single cuts, my Les Pauls, my, you know, it's what I like. I, I like the, uh, I like the vintage tones. Um, I like to stack my drives. I like to, you know, get everything I can get out of it. So I decided if I was going to put some hand wound, beautiful made in the USA pickups in there that look just like that. Oh, those things are gorgeous, right? Then I should do some more upgrades. So there we go. Got them nice brass saddles there. We threw a brass nut on that bad boy. We got some hip shot open backs. Oh yeah. And uh, I threw some lampshade knobs on there just to figure if I'm gonna take my SE and try and make it core, I might as well make it core. And then, uh, just cause I felt so, what you got here, I drilled some tops into my guitar, right? We got here is uh, a switch hooked up to each pickup so that I can split them. Now, nifty thing about splitting these pickups is uh, Dave down at Jean Bucker has an option for his pickups. It's called Splat. And what it is, is something I don't explain so very well. So I'm probably just going to put it up on the screen here. <laughs> but essentially, it's so that you don't get that huge loss in power, that huge drop when you split it. So what I'm, to my ears, split little P90-ish, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but I gotta say, you know, again, there was nothing wrong with the guitar. This is all a matter of taste. Um, but, you know, I just, what's used to having a guitar, if there's a, a thing or two that you can change about it, and it doesn't cost you the, the world, do it, right? I mean, it's, it's worth it to get you something playing like you want it to play, and sound like you want it to sound, and uh, as you'll see... I'm getting all the tones I want off of this. I, I, I'm really, 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 really happy with this guitar now. Um, and, you know, it's not everything. I'm a tinkerer. You know, we know that. But it's not always everything. Like, for instance, my other PRS, my uh, Starla, I have no intentions on touching anything on that guitar. 
maybe a set of locking tuners if the tuners ever slip, but they haven't slipped. So no reason for that. Let's give a listen here. See what uh, Dave Donna Jean Bucker is doing for us. I'm gonna go split on the neck. Listen to it full. Oh, man. So nice and subtle which is what I'm looking for because let's be honest you know split splitting the coils on humbuckers gets you a different sound it doesn't get you a single coil sound you know so what I want is something that if it's not going to give me a straight up single coil sound it's going to give me something usable that's just a little different <laughs> Now, see, the thing about working with John Buckers over there and Dave is he was very in-depth and in asking me what kind of tones I like, what I wanted to get out of it. He watched the video that I did on the guitar to help me figure out where I needed to be uh, pickup-wise. And in doing so, actually taught me, taught me a lot about what I like about tone. So I don't like shrill. <laughs> I'm, I like low end. Um, you know, when you're in a band, having them high mids and stuff, you know, that's why you got pedals to push you through or, you know, you, you throw the mids up on your amp when you're playing with a band. But I do a lot of demoing and do a lot of playing by myself. Now, I could put everything at the settings that I would play in a band. I tell you, it wouldn't translate very well. Uh, if you've ever taken a Strat and plugged it straight into like a twin reverb with you know, just some reverb on it and went at it. I'm the guy that's like, wow, that's too sharp. That's, which is actually a reason behind the amp I got coming up to show you guys, but I digress. Um, and Dave, he set me up real good. You know, he listened to what I like. He listened to what I was looking to get out of it as opposed to what it was giving me at the time. And he 100% delivered. Let's check out some bridge pickup sounds here. <laughs> and cutting like a bridge pickup should be clean all right let's split it <laughs> If he really gathered it from the information he took from me that one of the things I don't dig is when you split a humbucker and it loses all its power but it also gets kind of ice picky you know that's no good that's it's not good and what these do if you notice this is the bridge which would normally be and they're so responsive Cut that volume back a little bit. You know, humbucker's got enough to push it, but it's pushing it with 
you know, eight, less than eight and a half ohm, a K ohm, it's not uh, pushing it with 16, like a Dirty Fingers or something like that, which, again, this is where I live on guitar, you know? <laughs> Go to the middle position. Let's do middle with everything split. just in the front here and push it and see what we get. <laughs> Just some really nice... <laughs> it's nice, that's very, very nice. So let's hit it with a little more drive. We'll go with the Angry Charlie, see what we get. <laughs>
and so with that, I thank you guys for sticking around. Let's check it out one more time. Let's just let's move this one out the way. There we go. Hey. Oh man. It's a great guitar. It always was, but now, now it's mine. So, you know, people talk about the tinker and stuff. And here's my thing, right? Every guitar you have should be your signature model. Doesn't matter who makes it, doesn't matter where you got it from, you should feel every time you pick it up, like that guitar is for you. You should feel like that guitar was made for you. That guitar is your signature model. Now, we all know what we like. We like all kinds of different stuff, but if you can put those things on it, if you can make it do what you want it to do, then I'm pretty sure that's the point, right? Yeah, so between the pickups and the wire up, the wire up's out of control. It's from Burr Electronics. Uh, it's a 50s wire up, okay? It's got the vitamin T. I'll throw some pictures up there. Some real sweet CTS pots. It's great. It's got, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the company with the switch, but it's a super great switch, and I'll put that up on the screen too. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I have to find a friend that has a core PRS because now I want to... I want to go head to head with a core PRS. I really do. You know, it's, oh man, look at that. That nut, let me tell you that that nut was a pain in my bottom. I had to go wars with that thing, man. But it's worth it because it sings. I mean, so that's going to be it. Uh, next thing I got coming up for you. Well, I got to do some work on my buddy Tommy's guitar. Uh, I've had it for years. It's time to get it done. Um, but as far as next up for the channel, uh, I do have a lot of more mods coming, things like this. Um, for some of the guitars you guys have seen that I own, you might have forgotten. Go back and check out some videos and stuff's coming. I, I just got news today that uh, I'm supposed to be getting a relic in. Some kind of relic guitar is supposed to be coming into my hands. So you guys will be seeing that. And I still haven't shown you the new amp, but it's in the house uh, and it's... It's amazing. So I haven't brought it out to the studio yet to now. But uh, I got it all coming up for you guys. Um, moving into my favorite season. This is uh, this is the good times for me. I'm a I'm an autumn kind of dude. So, But till next time, thanks for hanging out. This is Gear and Guitars with Mel. I'm Mel. You guys take it easy.